Hello and for today's flip learning homework we're going to be looking at germination and how plants grow. So the last couple of lessons we've been looking at pollination and fertilization so we're going to see what happens to the seed after it's been fertilized and how germination occurs. And You're also going to look at a seed um, and do a dissection to see kind of things that happen to it once it's germinating. So a recap, some of these questions are going to end up being on the mini test with your applicers to make sure you watch this video. So where does pollination occur? Well, you should all be aware that it's C, so the pollen lands on the stigma. And fertilization occurs in the ovary, which is D. And there's the tube and the nucleus going down the tube to fertilize the ovule, or the egg cell of the plant. So the pollen tube grows down the style. of the plant and pollen enters the ovule via the micropyle. Which part of the pollen moves down the pollen tube into the ovule? Well, it's not all of it, it is only the nucleus because that's where the DNA is kept. And the ovule becomes the seed of the plant. The ovary becomes Yep, the fruit of the plant and if you remember seeds in the middle the ovary basically becomes the fruit and that allows the seeds to be dis distributed, distributed around so if we're looking back at the seed structure you're going to have a look firstly at completing a germination worksheet so you've got tough seed coat called the tester water enters through the micropyle and to activate the enzymes, tells the plant that it's ready to germinate, and then we get the embryo shoot being produced. Radical is the embryo root, and here's the starch store, and that is used in order to give the plant some energy to grow before it can photosynthesize. So you're going to do a dissection. You're going to have a seed, and you're going to do these various things and look and try and find the different parts. So we can see the embryo, the seed coats various parts of the seed and you're going to have a look at defining germination and here are some plants that are germinating and this is what it would be like if it was underground. So germination is a process by which plant grows from a seedling to a new fruit or flower. So once the seeds germinate a little bit more you start to get the embryo plant, the radical which is part of the root and the plumule which will become the flowering part of the plant amylase is secreted and hopefully you can remember that amylase breaks down starch which allows maltose to be produced and can be absorbed and used for respiration so remember this is all from digestion so the maltose is broken down into glucose glucose plus oxygen goes to carbon dioxide and water so it allows respiration of the plant to release energy to allow it to grow and make new substances Again, you need this store because the plant cannot photosynthesize at this point. So over time, you've got the light, you've got soil, the seedling will photosynthesize, make its own food, so the seed isn't as important anymore and it will use up all this food storage. So the seed loses mass as it uses up its starch stores, but it can't photosynthesize yet. And then the mass increases, the seedling can photosynthesize and it starts to grow. So the dry mass, remember, is the mass of a solid of all the water removed. The seeds need water to activate the ox enzymes, oxygen for respiration to allow for energy to be released. And as you'll all no doubt realize that you can't produce energy, so you have to release energy. And you also need warmth for the enzymes to work effectively, so they need to be at the optimum temperature to make it work the best. So light's not needed yet, as they can't photosynthesize, so light is actually not needed for initial germination. But light... So, if you had this set of tasks here which we may well set up 
you're going to set up the seeds and we'll work out which ones are we're going to produce the best seeds. So you need to have a think about which one you think out of these will make the best seeds, which ones will germinate the most. A, B, C, D, E or F. Look at things like temperature, how much light, soda lime or pyrogallo, which will absorb the oxygen, whether it's moist or dry. What do you think is going to be the best one? Here's the answer. So these three seeds will be produced because CO2 is not needed, light's not needed initially, although later on it might do. And often you find that seed things with no light will get taller because they're trying to search for the light. This one won't grow, it's too cold, too dry, and there's no oxygen for respiration. These are all the different things that will affect the rate of germination. So the number of seeds, because there's more competition. Humidity or water volume, if there's not enough water, they won't be able to grow because the enzymes won't be activated. Types of seeds, some seeds will germinate faster. Different sizes of seeds can affect germination. Type of soil, if it's got enough nutrients in it. Temperature will affect enzymes. The depth of planting and oxygen levels. These will all affect the rate of germination. And at the end of the lesson, you're going to be given the chance to design an experiment to investigate the effect of a variable on germination. So the things you'll need to think about are the organism you're going to use. So you need to name one kind of seed or species. An independent variable. So remember, independent variables are one you change and you're going to look at. So you could have a range of temperatures, different species, a range of oxygen concentrations. A dependent variable, which is the one you're going to measure. So usually this will be the percentage of seeds germinated, either each day or after a given time. You need a control variable, so you need to explain what thing is going to keep the same, so that it's a fair test. And you also need an experimental method, so you can get up to two marks plus one for quality communication. So in your IGCSE, you will be asked to design an experiment, and this is how it's going to get marked. You'll get marked based on, to make it valid, choosing the correct organism, the independent variable, so the thing you're actually going to change, the dependent variable, the thing you're actually going to measure, the control variables, so how are you going to make it a fair test, what you're going to keep the same so that the dependent variable doesn't change based on one of these. You need the dependent variable to only change based on your independent variable. And then finally, you'll get two marks plus one for quality of written communication, so using the right biological words for getting a good method that anybody could have a go at undertaking. Finally, you need to explain how reliability will be ensured. So usually this is just repeating investigation, finding an average to make sure it's reliable. Okay, so hopefully, based on that topic, <coughs> you can give a thumbs up on for germination and facts that affect germination. If it's a thumbs down, watch the video again, make sure you understand it. Especially pay attention to the multiple choice section at the start. Um, but I will also be looking at how well you could answer the question based on factors that will affect germination at the end of the video. Okay, so make sure you've watched it and you can answer questions on it next lesson, which will be on Wednesday. Thank you for watching.